Hey, we're back with another episode, and this time our early top 10 wide receivers, some hot debate, and some Dynasty download. Do not miss it. Hey, Footland, something that's made the past year way easier? Well, it's being a longtime user of HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit for a reason. Now's the best time to find out why. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right is here. That's me. Jason Moore, drafted it, to be great. It's a me. I'm Andy Holloway, welcoming you into another spectacular episode. Judge Giamatti, pulling levers. Hey, oh. Al Borland, hanging out. What's up? <laughs> Tuesday, April 20th. It's quite the ordeal now to introduce it's everyone a, on the show. It's a real hassle. We're 30 minutes into the show already. At least Jay Grizz didn't show up. Oh. Yeah. Never so, does. Sorry. Very rarely. Only when it's his time to shine. Well, okay. We have some audio directly from Jay Grizz. Uh, we got some news to talk about. Top 10 wide receiver rankings. Early top 10 rankings today. Excited? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know, it's it's always one of those things where it's like these are the best of the best, and it's it's always fun to talk about them. They're the ones that you're talking about with your friends. Who are you going to draft in that first second round? But in the, but in the end, it's like they're they're good. We know that we they're know that these good. top guys are are good. There's there's less uh, debate. There's less when I look at the rankings of your guys that I can go, what an idiot. Well, because we're all pretty close. Find something controversial to say today, Jason. That's your mission. I'll write that down. Find something controversial to get out there. A hot take about well, one of these players. Well, you I'll know, say, it's not a hot take, but it's fun to talk about these top ten players that puts where they're all great. And you know that two or three of them are going to be fantasy football busts. Okay, that's so, always fun. Just just remember that. Yeah, fantasy football. That yeah. old so and so. Uh, ultimatedraftkit.com. Check out the UDK Plus with all the Dynasty Pass content. We'll have a Dynasty download on today's show. To end the show, we'll talk about um, some Dynasty thoughts on a player that's w that I think it's is tough. One of the hardest. It's tough. Yeah. Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us on social media, Instagram.com/slash Fantasy Footballers as well. Jointhefoot.com is our community. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Continuing his world tour, Cordero Patterson has signed with the Falcons, and uh, it's a one-year deal. Cordero is – he got into the NFL, unfortunately, at the wrong time because he's like he's a – I've seen – I saw some Twitter debate talking like, can, you know, Devin Hester get into the Hall of Fame for being a returner? Because, right. I mean – Devin Hester was legitimately a weapon who changed the games, changed the the season for the Bears. And Patterson is you can talk about him in the in the the same realm as Devin Hester as being one of the best returners of all time, but the return the like kickoff returns is is so mitigated now compared to what it was like 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean he's one of the best kick returners. Yes. that I've ever seen. Um do you think that Devin Hester would have been Devin Hester in today's NFL? No. I mean, because e even the punt return, I feel like somehow when he was doing his thing, people were dumber, and they kicked to him. Like, I feel like no one would ever kick. <laughs> well, like, year one, Devin Hester never gets the ball kicked to him ever again because someone would be like, the analytics say when you kick to him, he runs it back for well, a touchdown. I mean, the, in the Super Bowl, it was hilarious where you're like, don't kick don't it. Don't do it. Don't kick it to Devin Hester on the opening play of the Super Up oh, there. Touchdown. And did every, it. Everybody knew it. I mean, the commentators are talking, well, yeah. will they kick the ball to him? No, they're not going to kick. Why are, no what are you doing? No one's that stupid. <laughs> the special teams coach is like, not our team. Oh, very, very I've got team. them already. 
Uh, the Falcons waived Ito Smith, which is funny because Cordero can fill that role. He could. As a backup runner, if necessary, in Atlanta. But Ito Smith, the experiment is over. <laughs> He's just as not good as we thought he was. <laughs> Jason's disdain for Ito Smith, for a, a fringe backup running back, you're – your dislike of him, it makes no sense. Well, it's really what is, rare. What did Edo Smith do to you? He sucked, man. And 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 it never hurt me in any way, shape, or form in fantasy. It's not like I ever picked him up to play him because I have eyeballs. Um, I but, think what, what upset me was that the Falcons would put him on the field. And that was like, this is shame on you. You shouldn't do it. And now good for them. They, they got a new head coach in and they're like, why is this guy on the team? Your disdain should have been for Atlanta. Like, Ito's gotten – they say run out there. Ito just runs out there. No, that's good. I mean, look, if Mike, <laughs> if you were on a team, I, no. I get it. It wouldn't be your fault that right. you're slow comparatively. I shouldn't blame you. <laughs> oh, no. But it would, it's upsetting. No, he wasn't drafted to be great, Jason. He was drafted to be average. Yeah, but people – I mean, he just never should have get, been given a shot. All right, Alex Smith announced his retirement from the NFL after 14 seasons. Hats off to you, Mr. Smith. That is a long career with an incredible story and uh, one of six quarterbacks in NFL history with 34,000-plus 34, passing yards, 2,600 wow. rushing yards in their career. And uh, Impressive. If you want to know the other five, it's John Elway, Aaron Rodgers, Donovan McNabb, Fran Tarkington, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Fitz. Yeah. And one of the more insane stats ever, throwing this out there, since 2017 – Alex Smith has as many weeks finishing as the quarterback one for fantasy as Aaron Rodgers. That's a fun stat. That's a loaded stat. Yeah, yeah. It's, a yeah. Little, it's a little cherry pick, but this is a celebration of Alex Smith, so good for you. Uh, I think his career will be looked at so much. F like I look, I look personally on it fonder now because of what happened last year, because of the comeback story, and, you know, we weren't sure dude was going to have a leg. Right let alone be able to play in the NFL again. So it was awesome to see. And I was also happy he hung him up. Yeah, there, there's been so many storylines for him. Even when he was usurped by Colin Kaepernick and that crazy Harbaugh decision, like they were a good team and then he mm -hmm. got sat down and then he's there before Patrick Mahomes and a great quarterback in Kansas City. Um, and then the comeback. So hats off to Alex Smith. Go enjoy your retirement and your family and stay healthy and we'll be happy. And we won't cringe when you run out there thinking, oh, no, please not again. Yes. All right. Uh, any other news, Brooksy, that has broken in the last five minutes here? No, that's all we got. All right. Let's, uh, it's not our fault. Look, if there was more news, we would, we would talk about it. Any other Edo, Edo Smith bits of news that we have? Checking, uh, no. Let me check the waiver. Yeah, it looks like he cleared well, waivers. I mean, I, if, if you want to lean into it, like right now, Mike Davis is on that roster, and that is it. That, that is currently all that is happening. And if Mike Davis makes it through the draft, I don't think he will. That seems impossible. It seems impossible, but the impossible frequently happens inside the NFL draft. If Mike Davis gets out of the draft. Brian Hill's not on the roster, right? Uh, not as far as I, I'm looking at a, a depth chart right here. And you, it's Mike Davis and, and, uh, <laughs> and Oleson. And Cordero. Right, yeah, yeah, and Patterson. Patterson could fill in, too. They haven't put their actual draft pick they're using on a running back <laughs> in the depth chart yet? No. Okay. Draft Najee. <laughs> uh, they will. Uh, let's move on to our early wide receivers. Wide receivers. All right, our early, early consensus top 10 wide receivers, guys, Devontae Adams is at number one. That's it's right. It's shocking. Take that, Michael Thomas. This was You're because I had him at number one where you two had him also at number one. Uh, 2020 was one of the best fantasy seasons ever for a wide receiver. Devontae Adams is the first player to lead wide receivers in fantasy points in fewer than 15 games played. He only played 14 of them. He had 18 touchdowns. He scored more points than I think everybody but Aaron Rodgers did. Uh, Interesting. I mean, from week seven on, only Rodgers scored more fantasy points than he did. Impressive. So that's pretty crazy. Um, I would say that even though the generalized refrain of touchdowns are hard to predict and are very variable, very variable? Yeah, that they're works. Varied. Um, they're not for Adams. Adams is a player that has had 10 or more in four or five seasons. They use him 
creatively. They use them in the slot. They target him on purpose in the red zone. It's very predictable. And they don't matter. I mean, they ma they matter a lot. Touchdowns? It, it, well, my point is, take them away. The dude had 170 target pace. Like, you know, sometimes the touchdown dependent players were like the Des Bryants, where you go, sure. uh, you know, it, he needs those double digit touchdowns. You know, he was on pace last year for 1,570 yards on 170 targets. Like, oh, no, if he ends up with eight touchdowns, he, he would probably be the number one wide receiver. Yeah, and uh, the wide receiver position, I know Kyle the Borgogan, he mapped out the last decade of each position and how the respective number one at the end of the year was drafted. And the wide receiver position is an area where if you look at that chart, and you compare it to how, you know, the number one running back off the board performed or the number one tight end performed, wide receivers did pretty well, uh, but, more predictable. But, but mostly because of Antonio Brown. And Calvin Johnson. Yeah. But, uh, that is, but that's the name of the game with wide receivers. You have predictable names. Devontae Adams is a name that you see sustained dominant success for multiple years in a row, which you don't always see at the running back position, but you do at wide receiver and tight end. So he's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just staring at the game log, remembering week 15. <laughs> look, look we're, we're, we've given the man enough dap. He's the number one guy in our, in our Yeah, say something Vegas. mean. Yeah, week 15, you buried me, Devontae. <laughs> You killed my listener league championship hopes. He's only played a full season once. That's the one, yeah, you know, negative thing you can say about Devontae Adams. And week 15. And week 15. Yeah, last year. Tyreek Hill comes in at number two. He's number three on my list. Two for Jason, two for Mike. 135 targets last year. 87 for 1276 and 15. That's a lot of touchdowns. Uh, he has been an absolute road warrior, been incredible. In fact, I think at fa via fantasy points per game, he's the best wide receiver ever on the road. <laughs> so that's better than Julio or Calvin or Rice or Brown or Moss. No. That's not that's not how home road splits are supposed to work, Tyreek. Yeah, he is, he's very comfortable on the road. And uh, last year he was far more consistent than in years past, which I assume lends itself to the number two spot on both of your boards. Uh, what what lends it to him being number two on my board is the fact that I trust the the body of work for five years. I mean, he has basically been one of the best fantasy wide receivers since he's been in the league. Last year only had 12 games, so it was kind of that, that down year and you had Patrick Mahomes injured. Out, outside of that, you know, 2017, he was the wide receiver four. Followed that up being the number one wide receiver in fantasy, and then he was the number two last year. So, I mean, when you're tied to Patrick Mahomes, you've got a, a skill set that literally can't be stopped on the field. Uh, you, we don't know who's going to have 15 touchdowns or eight touchdowns or 12 touchdowns. I want the guy who is set up to just dominate physically on the field, tied to a great quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes. Uh, there's a tear break for me after these top two. Like, I see Devontae Adams Interesting. and Tyree Kill very, very, very similar. The next two guys, who I love, I just drafted one in the early uh, mock draft that we're doing for the fantasy footballers. Check check the website for that mock draft. Um, I drafted the third guy on my list, who is a tear down to me. Well, he's uh, the third guy on our list is my number two, so there's not a tear break for me at that point. But this year, only three games where uh, Tyreek kind of posted disappointing performances, 81% consistency, which ranks him an A on our player profile, a 23% target share, absolutely dominant, nothing that you can really say that's negative for Tyreek Hill, predictable situation, great head coach. This is why, I mean, drafting these top-tier wide receivers, you know what you're getting barring injury. And he has, he's not just consistent where he, you know, like he's very good most of the time. And he also has weeks where he can give you 269 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, like he, he has halves that, where he can. <laughs> he has that built into him. We're not all, you know, like Michael Thomas. I mean, he's going to be a whole different discussion now that Drew Brees is out of the way. But you for Drew for for Michael Thomas last year, you weren't ever projecting like, oh, Thomas is going to go off for 175 and two this game. No, he's not explosive. Tyreek Hill's as explosive as they come. Right. Since 2017, most multi-touchdown games tied with Devontae Adams. So if you want him to win you a week, he did that 
three times last year where he had multi-touchdown games. Stevon Diggs comes in at number three. He's my number two, which I think surprised you guys when you saw that. It did. Um, four on both of your lists, and last year was unbelievable. I mean, 127 catches on 166 targets, 1,535 yards, eight touchdowns, finished as the wide receiver three, and, uh, you know, if that's 10, 12 touchdowns, things go the right way for Diggs on that front, and uh, it's even more impressive. So finished the wide receiver three under double-digit touchdowns, him and Josh Stallion, look, the offense in Buffalo is going to look like it looked last year. And that means heavily targeting Stephon Diggs, who wins at every level of the defense and uh, demands targets, both like with his voice because he wants them mm -hmm. and with his play as he deserves them. Number one in the league in targets. I mean, that's my kind of uh, conviction on Diggs is that I, you know, it's splitting hairs between him and Tyreek Hill. Sure. But the. Josh Allen, is, it will be fascinating to see what happened, the follow-up to the, the transformation of Josh Allen where he went from you know, the, essentially the worst passer in completion percentage to one of the best just overnight. I know Stephon Diggs was on there, but a lot of the credit has to go to Josh Allen. He also jumped from 20 passing touchdowns to 37. His, his touchdown percentage, so you know, the percent of his attempts that turned into a touchdown – that jumped over two full points, which is absurd to make that jump. So can Josh Allen follow up that season with anything remotely close? Because we, we know that when players overproduce like this, they kind of they, they fall back to their average, a little bit of a, like their average. But we don't know what the new average is yet for Josh Allen. So Andy, are you are you confident that Josh Allen is a 30 plus touch 30 plus passing touchdown? guy and thrown for 4,000 yards. Yeah, I think 30 plus is in the bag for Josh okay. Allen, but it's a fair point. The predictability of the quarterback position is a fair point against Diggs versus someone like Tyreek where you know what Mahomes is for a longer period of time. Um, they were the number one team in terms of first down passes. They were number one in terms of three wide receiver sets. We watched it. I mean, this was a pass first offense in yes. every respect and I it doesn't seem like this team's ready to you know, bring in another running back and change their offense that worked so well last year. And I, I love, you know, McDermott. I think he's a, a great head coach. So um, I just like Diggs a little bit more. That's it. And it's fine. We, yeah, when when I look, so for me, my three and four are Diggs and Hopkins, the next guy on our list. And when I look at those two players, the tiebreaker for me is, and we've talked about this recently with the Josh Allen versus Kyler Murray. I think Josh Allen and what we saw last year, I think he's legit. Like, he's not going to disappear or revert to some bad quarterback. But I do think that that is basically what his ceiling is, 4,500, 37. I don't expect him to grow from there stat-wise. The, the team wasn't good at running the ball. They want to fix that. Now, whether or not they're going to be able to fix that, if they end up drafting another running back or, or doing anything, they might not be able to. But but there are ways that I could see it. Uh, their, their passing offense regressing a little bit. Um, whereas there are ways I could see the passing offense for the Cardinals improving with Kyler going into the next year. So that's why I've got Hopkins one spot ahead of, of Diggs. All right, Hopkins is four, and you guys both have him at three. I have him at four. Last year had 160 targets, just six behind Diggs, 115, 1407. And I think a sad six touchdowns. Um, we were just looking at some of the team offensive stats for Arizona. Mm-hmm. You know, they were they were sixth in football in yards per game, but then down at 13 in points per game. Again, the same refrain. Problems around the goal line for Arizona. Clifford. Uh, Cl is that his name now? Clifford Kingsbury? <laughs> yeah. Mm, I um, like it. That's yeah. a loser name. And, you know. <laughs> That's a loser name? Clifford Kingsbury? You know how many, Kingsbury? You know how many Cliffords out there are extremely I mean, I, insulted? Look, I apologize it's to a big any, red dog. I apologize to any Clifford Kingsburys. I'm not just saying Clifford is a bad oh. Clifford Kingsbury is okay. a loser. Clifford Kingsbury owns many <laughs> castles. But he's, there is, yes, no, there is no way he doesn't own some that, chateaus. That is definitely a wealthy man's name, but not a 
You know, not a great football mind. <laughs> okay. So many tapestries. So many. Yeah. Brooks, you know him. I'm sure. Oh, Brooks, yeah. I'm oh, sure he Brooks runs in Brooks. Him. He gets all his Fabergé eggs from him. You know Clifford? Oh, yeah. We're connected. Okay. I imagine you share the same they're on a, they're wait on a, staff. It's a social media platform that we've never even heard of. <laughs> that, yeah, for the, the wealthiest? Yes. Um, no, but Arizona, it was part Cliff Kingsbury's play calling around the goal line and part execution problems where – you just saw Arizona consistently go to weapons that weren't DeAndre Hopkins around the goal line. It's as simple as that. When you throw to him, he's good. He demands the defense, but he can make a play over a DB much smaller than him that they didn't give him uh, enough work down there. And, and so we go into year three with Cliff Kingsbury, A.J. Green on the other side. Uh, there's really nothing to say about Hopkins that he didn't prove to everybody. Like he, Everything we worried about last year, mm -hmm. he proved everybody wrong. He could switch teams, remain elite. Great quarterback, great offense. You know, he, he might be – I mean, he's he's safe. He's probably safer than Diggs. Yeah, I, I would say both are, are relatively safe. But if you want to speak to being safe, you've got him being a top five fantasy wide receiver five of the last six seasons. And he's done it with so many different quarterbacks. So, um, yeah, I, I, I certainly think Hopkins has – he can still be better because of the touchdowns that I think should come his way – that didn't based on his yardage, his targets. Um, Hopkins, you know, I, I think he'll have a better fantasy season in 2021 in year two with Kyler than he had last year, and he had a, a really good season. Finished as the wide receiver five. Yeah. All right, before we get to our wide receiver five, a breakout a monster extraordinaire, want to thank today's sponsors, LinkedIn. Uh, look, I, I've run – several businesses over the course of our life and we know for a fact that hiring makes all the difference in your company you want to succeed you want to find a brooks have, hire hire the right people and if you want to fail hire the wrong people so i'm going mm. where you know there's that's, 700 that's hot business tips. hot business tips i'm <laughs> going <to> fail <laughs> where there are 740 million <laughs> professionals you know, all the companies across the globe right now were adapting, innovating, surviving in this last year. And now you can adapt and grow by finding the right people to grow your business at LinkedIn Jobs. They can help you do that for free. You can get started posting your job for free to reach that 740 million uh, business professionals out there. You put in uh, screening questions to get the most qualified candidates. And then you've got simple filtering and management tools to help you review, rate, hone in, on the one you want. Go to LinkedIn Jobs. They can help you hire the right person for your role. And the first job post is free. Just visit linkedin.com slash footballers. Again, that's linkedin.com slash footballers. Post your first job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Foot Clan, we'd like to thank Headspace for sponsoring today's show. With all the craziness going on, mental health has been brought to the forefront, which, forefront, which is great. And part of that is meditation and Look, I'm telling you, meditation does work. It does help. And you, you're maybe you're sitting there saying, I don't even know where to start. Well, Headspace is a great place for that. They help with your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. Headspace meditations start at just one minute each. They have a set of walking meditations so that you can fit them into any uh, schedule, even if you're really busy. Headspace has proven to help you feel better. Their approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. Well -being. All three of us have jumped onto Headspace. I will tell you personally, it is extremely easy to get into it, and then you get that meditation, and you do feel a lot better. It is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers. You're going to get a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal being offered right now. Headspace.com slash footballers. All right, at number five, we have AJ Brown of the Titans. I've got him at five, Jason at five, Mike at eight. Mike hates AJ Brown. That is the headline, the message. Hmm. Uh, finished hmm. as the wide receiver 11 last season, 70 for 10, 75, and 11. Played 14 games. Got off to such a slow start due to the knee injury that the perception of A.J. Brown with all of the excitement coming into the year, it just didn't match, right, in, in, to, to begin the season. I know, Jason, you had him on your team, I think, with Tyreek, and you were 
I just so all, excited. I was all excited to, to start the year strong, and it was basically week five before I got to uh, experience A.J. Brown last year because of that injury. Was it worth the wait? And it was worth the wait. He was great. Um, and the reality is it's his show now. You know, last year you, you had a really strong showing from Corey Davis who, you know, surprised I think a lot of us to show that like, yeah, he's an NFL wide receiver. He's, he's not a complete bust. But he's gone. In fact, the targets across the board are really depleted in Tennessee. You got John U. Smith leaving um, and other wide receivers. So, I mean, this is the opportunity to prove that he can be a true number one wide receiver, the guy that's going to be moving the chains um, first read every time type of player. Can he succeed? And is that who he is? Is that the kind of player that A.J. Right. Brown can be? This offense has been ridiculously – uh, efficient, he, you know, 70 receptions is 57 receptions fewer than Stephon Diggs had last year. Nobody doubts the ability of A.J. Brown, but will they remain this efficient of an offense, and will he be able to, uh, you know, what are they going to do with the offense without Corey Davis? Who is going to step up? You're not going to fill, you know, I don't think the 106 targets is going to 160 for A.J. Brown. That's not his M.O., so, you know, where do you – why do you have him at eight, Mike? What do you see as some of the red flags for a top 10 finish since he hasn't uh, – you know, he finished just outside that last year? I mean, I guess more just liking other guys a little bit more than, than A.J. Brown. It's not a knock on him. But the there is they are changing their offensive coordinator because Arthur had a plan, and it was to become a head coach. <laughs> so, which is – that's a good plan for him. Yes, yeah, it's a good, nice job. <laughs> good plan. Uh, so like that is a variable. That is a change of things. I can't imagine they're gonna try and and remake the the offense from the ground up. But like they were play action kings under the Arthur Smith uh, uh mold and and that plan. Do they keep that implemented as as often as it was last year? Because that's I mean the, you the play action with Derrick Henry and then going deep to AJ Brown. And I know it sounds you're like s silly to question will they do that. It's just it's a different offensive coordinator. You don't know for sure if he actually believes that that was the reason for the success or not. 21 career touchdowns for A.J. Brown. Listen to this. 48% have come from 30-plus oh, yards out. Oh, man. 48% from 30-plus yards out. This is the team. The Titans are the team, You know whether it was Derrick Henry's efficiency, whether it was Ryan Tannehill's emergence, whether it was the way they run their offense. It's a little bit of an anomaly the way that they do things, but they have done it for two consecutive years now we have that sample size and AJ Brown is such a good player that being said he had some drops last year that were maddening I know for you Jason watching these games if he doesn't take advantage of you know the big play you can be left with a little bit lower of a consistency than you would hope for from uh from your wide receiver one but yeah, it's, I mean, it's really surprising to think about what he did and then feel like he left a lot on the field, but he did. Um, I, I even went back this offseason, rewatched all of his uh, deep targets on the season to kind of uh, look at a new metric that I'm developing behind the scenes. And um, it was it was really crazy because you watch him make these unfathomable catches, whether it's contested or just one hand outreach, and then he gets hit in the hands wide open, streaking down the field and just – Bobble, 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 drop. Um, I do think I'm he excited, takes though. a massive step forward in targets. I, I I think he will be around 150 targets. I don't see how it doesn't okay. happen that way. He was on 120 target pace yeah. already if, if after the injury. Um, and then you lose so many targets in the offense. I expect 25% target share last year. Yeah. Whew. In that offense. So Smaller pie. Yes. Smaller pie, but. I mean, it just shows that he was already demanding a lot. Did you guys see that video of Derrick Henry out there catching passes? That was... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I did not see this. Oh my! Please gosh. tell here, it, describe it to me. <laughs> okay, I'll describe. I want to be. You. I want to be in on this. Okay, so he's uh, running forward like he's doing a route right okay. now. There's no defenders or anybody on the field. It's just right. him on, on grass. I'm with you. And then he runs, and then maybe he'll go to the left, and mm -hmm. then someone will throw him the ball. Yeah, and he's wide open, and and then he and then the ball lands in his hands. He catches it, and then he runs into the end zone. So it's really neat to watch him catch these um, really easy passes <laughs> and have people be like, "Whoa, Derrick Henry's a pass catcher people, this year." 
Remember people when were Jordan in. Howard did that in that offseason, that one? We did in two games. It was awesome. They should throw the ball to him more. Yeah, yeah but I just think in the like, screen game. The videos are – yes, exactly. They should set up more screens. <laughs> you should have like six screens a game, Derrick Henry. Yeah, because one in four goes to the house. <laughs> yes. All right, Calvin Ridley comes in at number six. Oh, yeah. Mike has him at six. We have him at seven, Jason and I. Last year, 143 targets, 90 for 13, 74, and nine. Fantasy finish of wide receiver four. None of us are putting him at wide receiver four. We understand what happened with Julio last year, but this was a breakout season for Calvin Ridley. Eight games with 100-plus receiving yards. He led the NFL. When Matt Ryan is running this offense, 100-yard games just flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it almost doesn't even take very long. Ridley will catch two big digs, and then it's over. He's at over 100 yards, and it's just kind of what he does. Uh, Atlanta, my, my goodness. He led Atlanta with 2,042 air yards. That's 41% of Atlanta's total air yards. He led the NFL with Sorry, air yards. Sorry, led the NFL with yes. 2,042 air yards. Just downfield targets. You love that. Yes, and that's why I'm I'm very bullish on Calvin Ridley. He is he is an elite separator. Uh, he is an elite route runner. I mean, it's like when you saw the – when you were watching Stephon Diggs and, and you're like, this player is very good and you knew – a breakout is inevitable for Stephon Diggs. I think that that type of breakout can happen for Calvin Ridley. And that's even with Julio Jones being healthy and doing Julio Jones type things. Like both Calvin Ridley and Julio can be uh, elite fantasy options. I just, I'm a little bit more bullish on Calvin Ridley, just youth and Julio. His body is, it's getting to the end. Uh, and it's just, he has that Houdini ability where Calvin Ridley is all of a sudden just wide open, it's, right it, in the middle of the field, and it's, and he's also 30 yards downfield. It's one of my favorite things watching Calvin Ridley because you know we're not watching the, the All-22 film. We're watching the same broadcast. The camera's on the quarterback, and then they throw the ball down to Calvin Ridley, who is, oh, they forgot to guard him again. Yes. And it's like, no, no, they didn't forget to guard him. He just knows how to get open, find the soft spots, in the zone every time he's he's so much fun to watch and um I, I agree I mean if I'm on the clock and you've got Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones as the last two guys left I, I don't want to be the one caught holding the bag when the time comes for Julio I want the young hotness um and and that's Calvin Ridley he, he proved it last year he's he's fantastic uh Julio is still a great player and yeah. he's still going to demand a lot of targets. Sure. And if he's healthy, instead of playing nine games, that will cause some complications. It's interesting when you look at last year, the wide receiver target percentage, right? So just looking at the wide receivers themselves, Julio, this is what he does every year, 44%, 43%, 42%, 40%. Last year, Ridley jumped up from like 27% up to 38% just among the wide receivers. Julio was down at 29% in his limited work last year. That'll be the area to watch. You know, how many targets does Julio demand? Because he is a player that, you know, that that's where he makes his bread and butter. He's never been the touchdown guy. Yeah, and Calvin Ridley does not have a touchdown problem like no. Julio Jones. Uh, Calvin Ridley, nine last year. He's He he was double digits as a rookie. Am uh, I yes, remembering that correct? That is correct. Like, that is not a problem for Calvin Ridley in the red zone with, with Matt Ryan. Uh, and I'm saying, I, I really do believe that both Julio and Calvin can easily finish as top ten guys. Uh because you had a couple of years ago where Calvin really still coming into his own in the league and uh and most new was on the team like it's now Calvin Ridley and Julio that is it that's it's the two options yeah, that it, they go to it's going to be interesting in drafts um I have them back to back in rankings Julio and Calvin uh correct Calvin okay. and Julio yeah and and the thing is is last year I just want people to understand though there were 100 missing Julio Jones targets from his normal number. I mean, you were talking about going from the 170, 157, and then with the injuries and the limited work, it was down at 68. So there were 100 extra targets in this offense. Did Julio Jones it, play in week one and week two? Julio Jones, uh, let me see here. He played in week one, and he got injured in week two. Okay, well, in week one, Calvary, He only had two, four targets in week okay, two. Okay, right, well, then we can, just, we can take the really small samples. But week one, Calvin Ridley was the number two overall wide receiver with yeah, Julio Jones on the field. They can get it done. It is worth noting, though, 
Um, there were seven games he played without Julio Jones last year. He had over three fantasy points per game on average more, over two targets more per game, obviously more than yards. Julio, you're saying? Than he did when Julio was on the field. So when so Calvin Ridley, and it makes sense, but he had much better games on average with Julio absent. So if Julio plays a full 17, um, then I do think you know you're 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 not finishing at wide receiver four. I would be taking. I, I'll tell you this right now, based on today, I'll take the cheaper of the two options. In the six game in the, in the games that Julio played and was healthy, twelve targets, ten, nine, ten, seven, ten. So I think that happens again. There's no reason for it not to. There's nothing on the field for Julio that's dropped away. It was the injury, and that could happen again. And maybe you take the safer, less injury prone pick. I understand that. But this could be like the Diggs and Thielen year. This could be one of those situations where if one's around later because everybody wants to avoid the risk, I will buy the risk. Yeah, it could be around. I think they'll be very close uh, when the when the draft time actually comes. And that's the just no, – I, I think he will succeed even with Julio, as I keep saying it. But having that built in, that if Julio misses time, Calvin Ridley is able to rise, Top five. To, rise to the occasion because not all wide receivers can do that. Yeah, we, we all want our wide receiver, our fantasy guy, to be the only show in town, but not everyone can handle that type of pressure and still succeed, but he just gets better. He thrives. New head Cal coach, new offensive elite. coordinator as well. That's true. So that'll be fun. That is true. Matt Ryan always oh, Matt does Ryan. Oh, no. really, really oh, no. well in first seasons. And, and honestly – Who's going to have more receptions, Julio Jones or Calvin Ridley? Calvin because he plays more games. On I, a, I on imagine a, Julio will have more receptions. On a per-game basis, Julio is the first read, and Julio will have more receptions on a, on a per-game basis. It, the, the last thing I'll say, th that number four pick is going to matter here for the Calvin, yeah. for the Julio. You know, if they take a quarterback, that's – that that uh, that's upsetting for me. I hope they don't. What if do they you, draft Kyle Pitts? I mean, that's targets. That's the you know for to go somewhere hedges. else. What do you the, your you seem the most concerned about Atlanta taking a quarterback there? Percentage odds that you believe Falcons go QB twenty five percent. Okay, that's pretty high though. By the way, I realize Julio missed the games last year, but um, Ridley missed three the game of the year before, and Julio only missed one the year before. So all they you know, I don't think he's played a full season yet either, Ridley. Uh, Michael Thomas at number seven. Oh, how the mighty fell. I mean, it just feels so meh. Yep. Meh. He, he's not oh, Michael no. Thomas. Oh, don't. Why got to do that to Michael Thomas? Michael Thomas. Oh. Uh, and I have him at nine, Jason at six, Mike at five. I still believe. Uh, last year he had 55 targets. 55! I believe the year it was, before he it had. It was not a good year. He had 55 targets per game. Um, but in seven games, look, you don't know how. How hurt was he when he was even back out there on the field? Super hurt. Yeah, the answer is extremely. He was very much not healthy. He was trying to get to be a part of Drew Brees' final season, and it, it didn't work out. I don't know if Michael Thomas can do enough next year on his own without the system and Brees. And the, we don't know if it'll be Winston. We don't know if it'll be Taysom Hill. I think it's better for Michael Thomas if it's Winston. But I just don't know what to believe about this. Coming off such a down year, disappointing year, even when he was on the field. I mean, he never scored. He never scored last year. Played seven games. Injured or not, never scored a touchdown. Yeah, that's wild. Um, when I'm staring down the upside of other players with more predictable quarterback spots, it's very hard for me to buy. I feel like I will pay for Michael Thomas in ADP, and it will be because of two years ago exclusively. Well, and the the reality is, two years ago, what happened is you saw how talented he was. Now you you lose the Drew Brees side of that equation, but coming into this year, you assume he is just as talented as he's ever been. Now that he's healthy and and out there, and he's also the clear cut. I mean, you want to talk about betting on someone's market share in an offense. Michael Thomas is right. the guy here. There's, you know, even Jared Cook is gone. Emmanuel Sanders is gone. You're not buying all the, uh, the, 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 what are we on the fourth year in a row? Traquan Smith is going to break out. I'm not off. Is of Traquan, Traquan Smith? Smith. Is mean, he going to Corey Davis? Look, Traquan Smith, uh, TBD. But, but my point is for a market <laughs> no. share. To, to Did he Traquan, say Robert Meacham? Is that who you just said? <laughs> Traquan is not oh, no, going to um, impede Michael Thomas. So when you look at just targets. He's going to have a ton, but I agree he's not going to have as many touchdowns. Well, and, and I think the reason I'm lowest 
is because if you pay the seventh wide receiver off the board for him, I think you're getting the absolute 100% ceiling of Michael Thomas. You're drafting him where he can max out. The one year, the super year, the is 185 targets that he finished at number one with Drew Brees. Three years before, 147, 149. Give him 150 targets next year. You're probably getting the wide receiver seven. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be my only kind of caution, and I'm just scared. I'm scared of what I don't know about this offense. No, I, I think you're right. I mean, you look at the three years prior. He was he finished the season as the wide receiver seven, the wide receiver seven, the wide receiver six. He is as consistent and awesome as they come, but he is not the top, he's not the Devontae Adams, the Tyree Kills, or what you hope AJ Brown can develop into or he he's a he is a back half wide receiver one. Locked and loaded. Uh, you know, assuming he's healthy. Can that change at all if if you if Jameis comes in with the uh I know Jameis has said he's ready to take care of the ball, you know, but he's he's still got that gunslinger in his heart. Now, it, does that change the the ceiling of Michael Thomas for you if it's if it is Jameis? No, I don't think so. I mean, it, you you had Drew Brees when he was getting you know the wide receiver seven and six. So I don't want to start any sentence with if Jameis Winston comes in and plays well. I don't. I feel like that's the most. Well, I didn't say if he comes in and plays well. I said if he comes in and plays. You did say that he says he's going to protect the ball, Mike. Yeah, yeah, no, but but I th do I think you believe him? No, <laughs> not for <laughs> no, a I second. No, I do not. Does he wink when he says that to his own coach? Though yeah, I want to protect the ball, coach. We still haven't seen Jameis with. We haven't seen LASIK Jameis yet. LASIK Jameis. Oh, the narrative street of LASIK mm, Jameis. Yeah, he hasn't seen LASIK Jameis exactly. yet. Exactly. He couldn't even get out there. Uh, no, too many variables for me to pay up. At least uh, if he drops, then we'll see. But I'd rather take this guy. Justin Jefferson, I have him at six. Jason at eight. Mike at 10. Ends up as our consensus eight right now. Last year, rookie season, 125 targets, 88 catches, 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns. The best touchdown dances in mm. the land. Oh, yeah. Fire. I mean, this was, uh, let, let's just be clear, a rookie season. He finishes the wide receiver six, but this was the wide receiver four from weeks three on. And you should that's what you should look at. Because this was a player, it took him two weeks to figure it out at the NFL level, and then he's the wide receiver four on the year, finishing ahead of so many more notable names. Not the most consistent week to week. That is a byproduct of uh, really the system. You know, it's a Dalvin Cook offense. Adam Thielen is still a very effective red zone weapon. So you didn't get rookie year. You didn't get everything from Justin Jefferson you could ever want. You didn't get consistency at the level of, uh, you know, Adams. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you can have a better rookie season than Jefferson did. I don't know that anybody ever has. I mean, 1,400 yards, pretty dang good. And, and like you said, those first two weeks, he wasn't really involved in the offense. The The pace from week three on, which is really fair with Justin Jefferson, is a 1,520-yard pace. He's outstanding. I mean, he was another one of those players when you watch. He's just open down the field. So smooth. Uh, I love everything about him. The knock that I have is that I do think that the Minnesota Vikings defense, which was horrible yes. this last year, which is a super outlier for a Mike Zimmer team, is in fact going to be the outlier. Their defense is going to be much, much better. They spent a ton of money this offseason on the defensive side of the ball, and that's going to allow them to run the ball more and play defense, throw the ball less, have to be in fewer shootouts, and that obviously does take some of the giant, massive yardage numbers that that Jefferson can put up when you are involved in those style of games and it takes a little hit so I don't expect him to you know because it was a rookie while he had 1400 that now he's going to come out and have 1450 yards I, I would be projecting him 1200 yards um, but the what he showed on film definitely has that anti Michael Thomas where you go he could be the number one wide receiver in in all of fantasy, he has he has that kind of explosiveness to his game. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Mike? I wanted to give you a, nope. Okay, yeah. When you look at, I, I don't want to leave this behind because the work was awesome. But um, Kyle mapped out the top thirty six rookie wide receivers over the last seven years and said they usually build on their early success. When you look at Beckham's rookie season, he followed it with, you know, his number five finished with number five and then number four. Uh, Michael Thomas followed his number seven rookie season with a number six. Looks like the players that failed in that department when they finished top 10 as a rookie was due to injury. You know, Juju uh, had his number nine year when he jumped up in year two and, and 
went down to 64 with injury. But I, you know, trust your eyeballs with Justin Jefferson. Whether it whether he finishes at six, seven, eight, whatever, I agree with Jason. He has the capability physically of being a top five guy. Julio's at nine. I got him at eight. Jason at ten. Mike at seven. We talked kind of. We can kind of breeze through Julio here. Uh, top eight fantasy wide receiver in six straight years before last year's injury plagued season, which should speak to the fact that he hasn't been injury plagued. If you went six straight years in the top eight. However, he is older, so you don't want to ignore injury, but you also don't want to overemphasize it and say, well, Julio's done because he missed six games. No, he had 10 targets in the games he played. Yeah, I mean, he, Julio has been injured 16 times per season every year, but he just mm -hmm. doesn't usually miss games. He he just has a catastrophic injury on the field, and then, oh, he's back on the field dominating. He dominated. There was nothing we could see on film that said he lost an inch or a step. The only worry that I have is the fact that he's 32 years old, and now will these injuries be harder to come back from, and will he miss more games? If 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 you promised me Julio's playing 17 games, if I knew that and I could look at a crystal ball, he would probably be my number three wide receiver. I would pick him ahead of Calvin Ridley. I'd pick him ahead of a lot of these other guys because he is always just dominated. 32 years old, 10 years older than Justin Jefferson. Oof. That's a decade. <laughs> the math does check out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can we cut that out? Uh, number 10, our final early wide receiver uh, that we're, we're going to talk about today, DK Metcalf. I have him at 10, Jason at 9, Mike at 12. He is difficult. He will win you weeks. Yes, he will do that. And I wonder, I wondered this when I was looking over this sheet, and you guys talked to me about this. I wonder if we're going to sound today and through the offseason like we sounded when we talked about Tyreek Hill after his breakout campaign when we talk about DK Metcalf. Because if you remember, there was doubt. There was the, oh, sure. you're explosive, you're not necessarily consistent. Oh, Alex Smith, he doesn't throw the deep ball. Oh, there's, you know... There, there are some things here that, you know, I think we could be wrong about. Sure. With DK Metcalf, based on him progressing as a player. I mean, 83 for 1303 and 10. Jason said it earlier this offseason. One of the things he wanted us to remember was like, don't overemphasize this Seattle switch to the running game. Let's, rem let's try to stay somewhere in the middle here and give the praise that's due for the wide receiver seven of last season in DK Metcalf. And the fact that maybe there's more, maybe he's a player that's going to have 10 touchdowns or more per season for five straight seasons like Des used to do. Right. It, it is, a, it is in the realm of possibilities. We as a show are low on DK Metcalf. He, yeah, there's a. I'm seeing him in a lot of best ball ADPs going as the wide receiver five, and we have doubled that now at the, at the wide receiver ten. He, the the whole Seattle offense is very difficult to decode with because I, I I know Jason, you're trying to remain optimistic about uh the 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 balance of the run and the pass, but to me, just the, like following the money is. They got rid of a coach who didn't run enough. They just paid a a running back to come in and be the foundation of the team. Uh, it, all this weird off season stuff with Russell Wilson, and I I don't know. I I have I have a very difficult time completely buying in on on DK Metcalf. The, the ceiling games are absolutely there where he will win you the week, but I mean, does the number? I, it, maybe he finishes, you know, as the number seven overall wide receiver. But when you have so many weeks of finishing outside of the top forty, uh, is that is that really the player you want to invest to be your number one wide receiver? Yeah, I mean, you know, if we remember back to last year and the way that the Seahawks season went, you had a locked and loaded, guaranteed first time MVP Russell Wilson over the first half of the year. Yeah. Everyone was talking about it's crazy how he's never had a vote. He's clearly going to be the MVP and the wheels fell off. And the they also had suffered. A, a terrible defense 
at the beginning of the year, which is pretty abnormal for Seattle. And um, and then the second half of the year, you know, that's where, you know, in the beginning of the year, I think both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf were top five fantasy options. The second half of the year, they weren't even top 15 uh, wide receivers. And Russ was throwing the ball five fewer pass attempts over weeks, you know, 10 through 17 versus weeks one through nine. Um, and that's concerning. But I do think that some of what happened in the second half of the year was anomalous as far as he missed a lot of those shots. I mean, he just literally they, – they played poor football on offense. And I, if I have to bet whether or not Seattle's going to play good offense or bad offense, whether Russ is going to hit DK Metcalf or miss DK Metcalf, I'm going to bet on it working because he's a good quarterback. DK Metcalf is as talented and otherworldly physically as anyone in the NFL. And I'm, at the end, I'm going to make a bet that they find a way to score a lot of moon ball touchdowns. He may be a player that we're lower on in our rankings, but I really want to have on my team. Um, but are you willing? over under 130 targets for Metcalf in year three? I will take the under. He actually did rank as a consistency score of uh, 68%, and that's an A in our metric, 24% yeah, was, target share. I mean, he was incredibly solid the whole first half, and then once uh, you can – I mean, you the can second half is tough. The you, second you, half is two times in the top 24. I mean, that's it. And you can see how many points teams are scoring against Seattle in that time. I mean, you go the, the whole first half, I mean, they're giving up easily 30-plus points a game. And then over that second half of the season, they're giving up fewer than 20 points a game. I need to stop. I, I Brooks, trained me on this. I need to stop throwing out these bets based on last year's target totals and things like that. <laughs> I've, I've got to retrain myself oh, yeah. with the whole 17-game yeah, season. So do we all do. I mean, if I say 130 times, I'm going to lose every one of them. Well, I took the under, and I was, I'm very wrong because yeah, there's an extra Yeah, game. you're right. So, All right, it'll be an interesting player to watch ADP-wise and what but, the confidence level so is. It, it, back to Andy, you were saying – we might be low, but you do want him on your team. As are, a two. Are you – you ain't paying I wide know. receiver two prices You're right. in the I'm draft. not going to have him on my team because I'm not going to pay – I'm not going to pay over what I know ahead of him in my rankings. Yeah, I mean – But he's going to win people weeks, period. Yes. I mean, yeah. he's going to win three games a year for somebody. If Tyler Lockett was on the Tennessee Titans, I would view A.J. Brown more like I view D.K. Metcalf. I don't think either team's going to throw the ball a ton, but the the talent and the ability. But with AJ Brown being alone, I'm excited about his prospect of having those targets come his way. Whereas they're not all going to go to DK Metcalf, and it's still a smaller pie. That I think that's a good comparison, though. Both teams proven efficient over time. I mean, those guys are going right next to each Same other. Same targets here last year too, by and the so way. So I'm I'm going to take AJ Brown over Metcalf if I'm taking that okay. archetype. I think that's a, probably an important statement because I don't think that's how it's rolling out in ADP. So, all right, let's move on. One more segment. Dynasty Download. I'm glad wait, wait to a... see we updated the graphic. What happened to my head? Well, the Dynasty Download segment, it's evolving, Mike, and it's new. And um, the graphics, we keep upgrading, upgrading them. <laughs> well, I, I guess the, the, the real question is, how did we get life size of my head in that graphic? Well, we got an 85 inch television. That's how we started. <laughs> um, so I definitely, if you want life size, don't look at uh, this on your computer or your laptop. You're going to need full television. Maybe if you've got a projector, you need a lot of pixels. Yeah, a lot of pixels. But uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy football. I think we're going to keep working on that graphic each week. And oh, just, are we? Yeah. And just, okay. Well, we just want to refine. We we're good perfect, perfectionists around here. That's right. It's it's much better now than last year. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Dynasty download. Here's what we're going to talk about today. It's a trade for trade away or hold for Kareem Hunt. Oh man. Still just twenty five. Years old. Right now, his dynasty startup ADP is uh, 58 off the board in the Chris Carson, Melvin Gordon, Mostert range, Deontay, Galladay range. Last year, I can tell you, I really loved and hated having Kareem Hunt on my team because I loved the end of every game, and it was brutal as a fan. There were multiple games during the season where I never saw him. 
He didn't take the field until the second half. Or he took the field three times and got one handoff for one yard. And you'd go in at halftime and you'd go, Oh gosh, why do I, <laughs> why is this my flex? I should have, cause he was always a flex choice for me. So it was always like I had another wide receiver and that wide receiver would have a nice first half. And I'd be like, Oh, I made the wrong call again. But nine times out of 10, he was the right call because he found his way into the end zone or the passing game in the second half. And we, I love Cleveland. I think Cleveland is a great team going into 2021. So Whoa. that was just reminding me I had a Jason Moore style. Ooh. Cleveland Browns won the Super Bowl in my dream last night. They are. They if, are anyone, if anyone wants to put some futures on my bet, do we have any or, uh, sample my, size of dreams. your dreams, Mike? Have they come true? Uh, I would have to check the tape on that. I, I, I don't think so. They are in consideration when, you know, I'm, my I'm, dreams, your dreams are in consideration Thank for you. just what I enjoy in life. But no, I mean, when I'm looking at who I think are, you know, the Super Bowl matchup for 2021 I mean they have to be up there the team is great now the issue that Kareem Hunt has is a Nick Chubb problem and yeah. we don't know whether he'll sign uh, you know that that second contract I think if all of us were to place a bet on whether Chubb will re-sign with the Cleveland ba Browns after his rookie contract is up we'd all bet heavily that it will happen yeah right Yes. So, you know, this is one of those things where as Hunt gets older, he's not going to go and get a massive contract from another team. I think this is his role from here on out. So that's how I view him in Dynasty, even though he's young. I view him as the two of the one-two punch of the Cleveland Browns for the next three or four years. Um, in which case, I'm a hold because I know that You won't get the value you want in a Dynasty trade. For Kareem Hunt, because you can't craft a narrative that makes sense. No, I, I and and maybe I'm willing to buy if someone is very low on him, but it's tough because he was the running back ten last year, which seems weird, and I don't think people realize he was a top ten fantasy running back uh, last season. I think season. you'll see some regression from Kareem Hunt too, because he he was under 200 carries. He only had 38 receptions, but he scored five times through the air, and I just wonder if that five receiving touchdown number comes down, and you you know. He's just so dang good, though. He's a great player, and when they're winning, they're willing to throw him out there to to end the game. Right? He'll 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 break off five, six, seven yard runs for the whole fourth quarter, and Nick Chubb will you know drink a strawberry daiquiri on the bench. I mean, Kareem Hunt ends the game. Well, and that and that's the thing is like you're talking about fresh legs and uh, the, the you know less risk of injury. There were only two running backs in the top twenty four that played sixteen games last season. Kareem Hunt's one of them. And it's probably because he played half of every game. You know, he's he he's getting a six. Uh, well, how long was Chubb workout. hurt last year? How, Chubb what was, was hurt that from stretch? I believe it was weeks five through eight. So five I think he eight. missed four games, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, yes, he missed weeks. He was injured in week four, so essentially missed that entire game. But but so four through eight. So the opportunities were through the roof, and he wasn't as efficient. But from weeks five through ten. Uh, you know, 20 opportunities a game for Hunt, which was not his normal. I mean, after Chubb came back, he was down at 12. So you went from 20 to 12. So some of his finish was kind of propped up by that injury. Yeah, and what's ironic is that was what was super disappointing. Like, I was all in on Kareem Hunt for where he was being drafted because I thought he's an RB2 with Chubb on the field, and if he goes down, he's a guaranteed top five guy. Well, Chubb went down, and it was like, oh, this is just like – I know the opportunities went up, but he didn't do much more with it. And you were super disappointed last year when you had the four-week stretch of all Kareem Hunt. I was, yeah, Hunt. I was super bummed. I'm going to go trade away. Final answer. I think you trade Kareem Hunt on the basis of the of the wider, uh, running back 10 finish. I'm, I'm going to try to get uh, work him into a deal and get somebody that I'm a little more confident in their workload and opportunities are more than 10 to 12 a game. Mike? Uh, I, I'm not going to trade for him. Yeah, I, I hold or trade I, away. I think I would trade him away. I think I would. I would try my best to do that. Uh, he is. He is a difficult case, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's all a matter of what you can get. What, you know, let's let's put it with rookie picks. Okay, you can trade. What do you think you can get for Cream Hunt first? That's the first question. You can trade Cream Hunt to in most leagues for. I don't know if you can get a late first for him. No, I don't think you can. Yeah, I don't think you can. So in that case, rookie picks are 
man. I'm not if, trading a second round pick for. If I had the 109, 110, 111, and I could trade him for Cream Hunt, I would do that. Really? So I'm more on the buy. Yeah, because he's. He's a quality fantasy. You don't like the mystery box very much. I don't like the mystery box. I want. I, it's a really good. My That's dynasty, a great analogy. My dynasty outlook is I want known commodities over possible upsides from mystery boxes. What's inside the mystery box? Uh, oh, usually Keyshawn Vaughn's in here. I don't get the LeBron card when I open the pack, and I know it can happen, but right. it doesn't usually. So I'm taking the known commodity in, in Kareem Hunt, who I know is awesome. You have. Use the, the strategy of cowardice to get yourself two championships. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Mike. Very nice compliment. Wait, so <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> so not wanting the mystery box is also cowardice. Yes. Well, yeah. Leading to okay. championships. It could be a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that goes a long way. Um, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting today's podcast. We appreciate them over there. Devontae Adams signed helmet. Or I'm sorry, a signed football right now is up there for $29.40. It ends tonight. Uh, Dak Prescott signed throwback full-size authentic on-field helmet. It's currently up there for $20. Ends on Wednesday night. Brett Favre signed jersey. $63 ends Wednesday night. There are hundreds of daily auctions. Check them out. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. All right, we'll have our wide receiver rankings part two show on Thursday with some very interesting names, probably some very hot debates, and Mike will try to compliment Jason even more. That I will. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.